What's up guys? We are back with another Marvel Legends review and we're taking a look at two multi-packs today. We're taking a look at our two, three packs for the Uncanny X-Men 275 cover. So this is Hasbro's way of giving us this cover basically because we've already gotten the Wolverine in the recent retro wave uh, to give us our blue and yellow suited figures. And if you're anything like me, I absolutely love this look for the X-Men. Just unequivocally, I'm a big fan. Now we get two three packs. We've got one with Storm, Forge, and Jubilee. And we've got the other, which is arguably the cooler uh, set for me. You've got Gambit, Banshee, and we've got Psylocke. Now these are, of course, closed box packages. So you've got renders on the front. You've got some really cool artwork behind them of the actual cover from X-Men 275. One spine gives us comic artwork, one spine gives us more product renders, and then the back of the box has more of that artwork as the background, as well as more renders showing what these guys come with. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package. We're going to run through each of these figures individually because, you know, they're all pretty different from one another. And I'm going to kind of go through them from least favorite to most favorite within their specific boxes. So we're going to start with the Forge Jubilee Storm Pack. And Jubilee, uh, in, in many ways, just across the board, is my least favorite of the bunch, mostly because she uses older parts. Now, in general, I'm still really happy to get her because of the fact that we are, in many ways, you know, completing just like a, a core team in one go. And, and, you know, I don't think we would ever get this in a mainline wave. I don't think we would have ever seen a wave of figures that are done like this. So I am really excited about the prospect of maybe being able to just knock out a team in a couple multi-packs and be done with it but we'll see if that actually comes to fruition with other stuff. Now, as far as Jubilee goes, she does have some older parts, but we do have some newer stuff here also. She is pinless, but that's because she has a single jointed elbow body. Now we've got a head that can look up, she can look down, you got rotation. Arms out at the shoulders, you got rotation there. We've got single jointed 90 degree swiveling elbows. And then of course you've got hinges, these are vertical hinges and rotation at the wrists. You've got a diaphragm cut, but like it's super, super locked down on her. Uh, she's really just going to swivel. Like I cannot get her to do much of anything, really. She does not want to cooperate. Legs go out about yay far. They kick forward about that far, pretty close to, to 90. Nothing really backwards. You've got your thigh twist. You've got your double jointed knees, pinless knees, so good range and nice and clean there also. There is no boot cut on this, though. Despite there being a spot for one, there isn't one on either leg. See, nothing moves. And then we've got hinges, we've got rocker, all that good stuff down there at those ankles. So she moves okay. She's not the greatest by any means, and she's certainly not the greatest amongst this set. Really, my main gripe with her is the fact that in an effort to make her look, you know, obviously smaller, because she is a younger member of the team, she is on a different body than, say, Storm or Psylocke. It's not the same combination of parts through and through. So she gets these older, and in many ways, very antiquated arms. I'm still pretty happy with her, though. Overall, there are some concerns with this one, and they don't really exist on some of the other figures for me. Mostly it's the paint, because yellow paint is always a problem in, in figures like this, because there's almost always never enough of it. And you can kind of see that on this one. At the shoulders, specifically, is where it's going to be a problem. But otherwise, she looks pretty good. And one of the one of the best aspects of these figures, and it's, it's present here also, is that, you know, straps and, and bands were a big thing on this team when it comes to their costume. And if, you know, you've got, like, the Jim Lee Cyclops or anything like that, you know they don't like to stay on. These are cut into the legs, so they're not going to move. They're not going anywhere, and I really like that. That's just a quality of life thing. It's it's one less annoyance that I have to deal with. And then we've also got photo printing up on this face, which makes her look so, so much better than the original Jubilee that we got, I don't know, whenever that came out, way back when. But she looks really good. I'm happy with the head. I'm happy with the hair. And I think overall the face looks really, really nice uh, with that photo printing in use. Now we do get some accessories with this figure and she really does have the lion's share when it comes to piece count. So she gets a set of fists to complement her sort of splayed finger, you know, power using hands. You get an alternate head sculpt. This is the one that we've got this before, but this is now a photo printed head sculpt with the bubble gum uh, popping out of it. So you've got that one. And then you've also got some magic effects, well, energy effects, and I do like these. I like the colors. They do not exact, well, they, they do not in any way really show her power set, but I like the fade from pink to purple, purple to pink. So even if I don't need them for her, I can use them on somebody else. 
And then lastly, because it's Jubilee, we do get her very 90s translucent pink sunglasses, her shades, because it wouldn't be Jubilee without them. So overall, she's okay. She is, I mean, she's without a doubt at the bottom of the list for me when it comes to these, and that's mostly because I'm not a huge Jubilee fan. She doesn't really do anything for me one way or the other, but she also has older parts, and that just sort of knocks her down a peg or two. Next on the list for me, we've got Forge, and it wasn't until I realized what, what accessory he comes with that I knocked him down, so to speak, to the second tier for this set, because I, I really like this figure. I do like almost all of it. And there are some really cool aspects of this particular forge. I know some people seem to think he looks like he's kind of sad in the face. I don't know that I see that, but I could, I can kind of pick up on what you're saying. But the big thing for me is the odd accessory choice. So uh, as far as articulation goes, head goes up, head goes down, rotates. Arms go out at the shoulder, they rotate. You've got a, a butterfly joint in there that is pretty well hidden because of the straps that he's got. So you, you can see them, but they're not like right in your face. So that's nice. Bicep swivel, we've got double jointed pinless arms. And then you've got hinges, rotation at the wrist. We've got our old fashioned ab crunch with really good range though. And then you've got rotation at the waist. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward, little backwards. There is a thigh cut up there. Double jointed knees. This one is pinless. This one is not because it's utilizing older parts, but it's okay. It's like it's a half pinless. So the top is pinned and the bottom is pinless. And then there is boot cut on this guy down here. You've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. So he moves really well. I don't really have any concerns with how he moves. I'm pretty happy with that overall. And parts usage on this guy, I am pretty happy with also. Uh, it's it's a slightly, you know, he's, he's kind of bulky. Forge is not a scrawny guy, so I'm happy with this. The colors are super bright and vibrant. I don't have any, any concerns like I do with Jubilee when it comes to paint or any kind of bleeding or anything like that. If anything, the coloration on Forge is much better because the paint, in most cases anyway, as best I can tell, it's blue over top of yellow instead of the yellow over top of blue. So you're not really gonna have as many problems with that. We've got the big X belt buckle going on. You've got his robo leg, which does look good. It's not the greatest from the back because of the hinge, uh, but that's not a huge deal for me. Sculpt is really nice down there. And then I think the face looks pretty good too. Again, I can kind of see what people are saying when they're talking about he looks like he's about to cry or something. But at the same time, I think it just sort of looks fine. Kind of a stoic expression. Photo printing is really clean and crisp on him too, though. The hair looks good. The bandana looks good. All that good stuff. And then he does have accessories. And, you know, I'm not upset about the fact that he comes with accessories. But there's a weird missed opportunity here when it comes to accessories. So he comes with a really weird wide gripping hand on his left, you've got a trigger finger hand on his right, you get a set of fists, and then we get this gun, which I don't, I can't remember where it came from. This is something that we've seen time and time again with other figures, maybe like AIM or Hydra soldiers or stuff like that. And it's obviously a very like futuristic gun. It looks like something that Forge could, could create or something like that. But his actual gun is something that exists in the library already. So the, the gun that he has on the cover of X-Men 275 is the gun that we got with the modern cable in the Juggernaut wave. So I need to dig that out. But we have it. I don't know why they didn't give him that instead of this, because it is literally that gun. Uh, there is no, no argument about that. I mean, maybe, maybe some chance it's slightly different, but it looks far more accurate than this thing. So this is a cool gun. It's futuristic. It's techy. It's forgy. But I would have loved to have, you know, had the other gun instead. And then rounding out this set for me is Storm. And honestly, it's for, for a couple reasons, a couple small reasons, really. Fully pinless, double-jointed elbow, knee, Storm. I'm absolutely here for it. And this head and this hair. I really like this version of Storm. I'm not the biggest fan when it comes to Legends of her cape thing. I don't, you know, just like we're going to see with Banshee in the next box set. I'm not the biggest fan of that, and I think hers were kind of wonky. So to be able to just get Storm like this... I'm pretty happy with. Now, as far as articulation goes, uh, she's still pretty normal, so head looks up, head looks down. It's still just a, a disc hinge with a ball on it. You've got rotation. You do have really good tilt on her, though. Arms out at the shoulders, you've got rotation. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed, again, pinless elbows with tremendous range. Hinge, rotation on that wrist. And then her diaphragm cut is really, really nice. Like, I don't have any issues here. I don't know if Jubilee is just beyond stuck or something, but, but this is what it should be doing, right? That's great. Happy with that. Legs go out. They kick forward. Really high kick, actually. Not much back. You got your thigh twist. 
We've got double jointed pinless knees here. Again, good range on that. And then no boot cut for her, which is not too unsurprising really, too surprising rather. And then you've got rocker and you've got really good hinges down at those ankles. So this is a really nice storm figure. Very, very happy with this. I mean, it's, it's very much what I want to see with like all female figures because they can be more articulated and they can still look feminine. They don't have to be big bulky figures just because they have double jointed elbows, right? So this works really well. And just like with Forge, I don't really have the same kind of problems with the colors. She is mostly blue over top of yellow instead of vice versa. So overall, her colors are all really clean, really crisp. You've got the cut in legs for the banding, which as stupid as that is, like I just like it. It makes things so much easier. I don't have to worry about gluing them in place like I ended up doing with Cyclops. Uh, and I don't have to worry about them falling down. And it makes them look so much more clean and consistent when they are sort of sunken into those legs versus sort of maybe being crooked all over the top. And then you've got what I think is maybe, maybe thus far my favorite Storm head sculpt, except for like that classic, classic Storm that we got a couple years back. But I really, really like this. She's got the, the gold lightning bolt earrings. You've got, it's Storm, so you've got pupilless eyes, and then you've got the white and gray hair. And it's just a really nice head sculpt. And what little photo printing she has, because of course she doesn't have actual pupils, which is a main focus for photo printing in a lot of instances, the photo printing is still really clean and crisp. Overall, she does look really, really nice. And then as far as accessories goes, she has just a couple sets of hands. Now she's got the same kind of like, you know, magic-y power kind of hands that Jubilee has. You get a set of fists with her, but of course in Storm fashion, she needs to be able to showcase her powers. And you get some Force Lightning Palpatine style hands here, which I really like these. These are, of course, fully translucent, and the yellow is painted, so the yellow's not going to match 100%, but unless you're right up on top of it, it's not going to matter too much. I'm a big fan of these. They just look cool, and it very much works for Storm. So she's definitely my favorite of the bunch. Not too far ahead of Forge, but they are both, I think, a lot better than Jubilee and are definitely the major focus when it comes to this three-pack uh, out of the bunch. Now, moving into the next three-pack, I find it hard to actually put her at the bottom, but it's only because this three pack is, is I think miles better than the other one. I feel like if they had maybe changed up the character distribution, it might've been a little bit more evened out, but Psylocke, Banshee, and Gambit in a three pack is just like top notch to me. That's some of my favorite X characters. Psylocke is my favorite female X-Men, so I'm super happy to get this one uh, in particular. Again, just to be able to knock out this grouping is fantastic. And she is very much just like Storm, which is to say, She's a really solid figure, but I think uh, she's just edged out by the two guys in this pack. So we've got a head that can look up a little bit. She can look down. Uh, she does have some hair that gets in the way. You've got rotation. Arms out at the shoulders. Rotation. you got your bicep swivel. Double jointed pinless elbows with some really, really good range again. And then you've got hinges. You've got rotation at the wrist. Diaphragm cut goes all over the place. Still really, really happy with that. Legs out. Kick forward. Backward slightly, you got your thigh twist, double jointed pinless knees, and then you've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. So, you know, she moves exactly like Storm does. She maybe has a little bit less range at the head and the neck uh, just because of the hair, but overwhelmingly, I'm really happy with what these new female body parts can do and how they allow these figures to move. And of course, in that same vein, she does look terrific also. The same kind of situation, I mean, it's literally the same body. So you've got all of that yellow and blue. You've got the blue, of course, painted over top of the yellow in a few places where it's needed. So we don't really have an issue with bleeding or fuzzy lines or any kind of, you know, layering kind of mess, anything like that. You've got the bands down in the legs, which of course look great. It makes these figures look a lot more seamless in that way. And that's, that's a big thing for these. They look like fitted suits instead of just stuff piled on top of them. And then you've got a really, really solid head sculpt here. I really like this new head uh, for Psylocke. I'm very happy with this. I think it looks a little bit closer to Betsy in some ways. Maybe not exact, but it is pretty close. I'm really happy with this. The photo printing looks nice. The eyes, the eyebrows, and just that touch of pink on her cheeks really does help accentuate things. And I also like, I re actually, I really like this hair. I like the way it flows. It does restrict her articulation a little bit, but I think it's very characteristic for Psylocke. So I'm happy with that. And then as far as accessories goes, she comes with a decent amount here too, uh, which makes perfect sense for Psylocke. So you've got gripping hands on her in the box. 
you get one left fist and then you get a right uh, you know chopping hand or something like that and then we get the various attachments for like her you know her psionic ability so you've got the the sword and you've got the the sort of energy effect that goes up through it and of course these are done in pinkish purple translucent plastic and then you've got the psychic dagger uh, that she can form on her hand and that's what you would use with that fist as well We've seen these before. This certainly isn't anything new, but this is very Psylocke, so I'm really happy that they included them, especially since she kind of gets a lot more accessories than some of the other figures throughout these packs. Next up, we've got Banshee, and he is a figure that I know I know we've needed for a long time. A lot of folks, myself included, want a classic version. I mean, they've got parts for him. They've got heads and things like that. We're going to get one at some point, obviously. I'm happy that they're knocking this out at one go, so I'm not upset that we're getting this version, you know, the less common version of Banshee first. He does look really good. He's very much just like Forge. The, the, the male figures are basically all the same here. So we've got a head that can look up. He can look down. You've got your rotation. Arms out. You, they rotate. You do have to watch the cape. It, it of course, is going to get in the way because it's connected to the, it's connected to the torso, the wrist, and the ankles. You've got double-jointed pinless elbows. Hinges, rotation, ab crunch goes backwards and forwards. You got your waist twist, of course. Legs out, pretty good. No real issues there. They kick forward. They kick backwards slightly. You've got a thigh twist. We've got our double jointed knees. You've got your boot cut, of course. Rocker, hinges. So exactly like Forge, the only real difference is that he doesn't have a robo leg that requires a pin due to older parts. The cape does get in the way. It's, it's unavoidable. It's not too bad, though. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I don't feel like it's exactly causing a problem. And I do think that it looks a little bit better. It sort of feels a little bit better than some of the Storm figures we've gotten over the years. I'm still not the biggest fan of this because it still looks... I don't know. It still looks kind of clunky to me in many ways, but his does look all right. So I'm not super upset about it. And it's, I mean, it's integral to this character that he has a cape like this. And it does seem to be attached pretty firmly too. He's also got the same kind of paint situation going on as the rest. So you've got blue on top of yellow. So again, very clean, very crisp for the most part. Still digging the, the thigh straps being cut into the legs. He does have a bit of a unique uh, neck situation because he's got the collar because why not, right? And then we've got a really, really solid head sculpt here. Like this is all, this is and was always going to be the head that I used for this guy, just in perpetuity, basically. Super, super nice sculpt. I really like the hair, how it's kind of flowing in the wind. You've got sort of rosy cheeks. Photo printing is on point. A lot of detail in that mouth also, and just the expression on him is a lot more expressive than like 90% of all Marvel Legends. So I do think that looks really good. However, however, I do have an issue with this figure, and unfortunately, it is a result of closed box packaging. My first example of closed box packaging being a negative for me personally. So, and that comes in accessories. Now, uh, Banshee has extra hands. He's got these sort of like style posy. They're kind of weird. Like this one kind of looks like a flight hand, and this one is definitely not a flight hand. You've got those, but he's supposed to come with a standard head sculpt also. I got two of the same screaming head. So... While it's okay to get two of, this, of the head I prefer, it's not what's supposed to be in the box. So this is a definite negative. Not a whole lot I can really do about it right at the moment. I didn't realize it until right before, well, literally right before I started filming this, that he had this alternate head uh, mistake. So that's a, big, that's a big bummer for me. And it's not the reason why he's in the second spot for this box set for me, but it is definitely a problem. Otherwise, otherwise I think he looks pretty rad, moves well, and I'm really digging... Well, these head sculpts. And then rounding out all six figures with my favorite figure of the bunch across both sets, Gambit. And that's mostly because I'm a big Gambit fan. I really like Gambit, always have. And this is a really solid Gambit figure. Most of that is the fact that it's a really solid body. I mean, I've already kind of shown two examples of it, so I'm, I'm not really going to run through articulation on this one. We literally just did it. But it's also this head sculpt and the assortment of accessories he comes with. Uh, the figure in general, I think, looks tremendous. He moves really well. And this is another instance of the correct application and order of paint to make things look as clean and crisp as possible. I mean, the blues are really consistent. The yellows are really consistent. And again, it's all about this suit. I think this is a great look for Gambit. It's, it's obviously not the classic look by any means for Gambit, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind that 
that this is one of the cooler looks for the character. I'm so happy to finally have this version of the character. And a lot of that comes down to how they pulled off this head sculpt. I think this is, this is easily the best Gambit head sculpt we've gotten. The hair flowing in the wind is just fantastic. The face mask looks really good super shiny black, and then the photo printing up there really, really brings it home. It's so detailed, super clean, super crisp. The eyes in particular, incredibly piercing, and just enough shading on the cheekbones and around the mouth to really bring out that sculpt. And then, of course, he does have some really, really solid accessories to it, stuff we've gotten before, uh, but it's really quality stuff. So to start with, you get, you get his little satchel, you get his little bag. I could have done without it. I don't know that I need it, but I am happy that they included it. You get an extra hand, so he has a gripping hand and the, the card hand on him in the box. You know, that's, that's the most important gambit hand out there, right? You gotta have that. He comes with the other gripping hand should you need it, which you might. You get the card throwing hand, so the kinetic card throwing hand. This, of course, the whole hand is fully translucent, so the yellow is painted. Uh, it's the same situation as the storm figure but I love this accessory. You get, of course, you get the single card that you can put in those fingers there. And that's that's like, that does it for me, that's Gambit. That's the look I need. But you, of course, also get the bow staff. And this is what you get the other, the other gripping hand for. And these are uh, both vertically hinged gripping hands too, which do work really nicely. So I'm happy to get this. You get like all of the greatest hit Gambit accessories all in one go to really, in my opinion, make, outside of the fact that this is not the classic costume Gambit, make probably the best Gambit figure that we've gotten thus far. So yeah, overall, I am really happy with these sets. Now, that's notwithstanding the fact that my Banshee is missing a head. I can live without it. It's still a problem, and I can't not mention it. But the sets are really good, and a lot of that comes down to the fact that they did this. Like, they did this thing to make this happen. Two three-packs and a single-packed Wolverine in the retro set to get all of these knocked out in one go, I think is a really good idea. I don't think this would work as a bath wave. I just, I just don't think it would. This is the right way to have done this. Get them all knocked out. Figures that share the same kind of parts, share tooling, share paint. All of this is similar. It all works and it works really well. I'm very happy to have seen them gone down this road. I think the only real weak link here is Jubilee because they put her on some older parts. But overall, this is some really good stuff. Like I, I live for this kind of X-Men stuff. This is my childhood in figure form in many ways, and I'm really happy to have these yellow and blue suits. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Yellow and Blue X-Men 3-Packs. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.